Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? Are you ready? Yo, what up, what up? It's your boy Rabino. And this DJ Erm in the building. And you listen to the Up and Up podcast. Yeah. Wait, what are we doing? I don't know, just listen. Yes, 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 yes. Welcome, welcome, welcome. What it do, what it do. Ladies and gentlemen, you're tuning to the Up and Up podcast. I'm your host, Rabino. And this DJ Erm, man. Yes, sir. Yeah. How you doing, man? Man, this weather, bro. It needs to make up its mind. See, I That's thought you was going to come with the with the positive vibes, bro. No, no, that is. I'm trying to have positive weather. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Okay. Yeah. You, you feeling kind of, you, you came in sounding kind of blue. You're wearing blue. Come on, man. No, no, I'm just confused. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> I'm not saying nothing bad or nothing. I'm just saying nah, I'm no, confused. it was sunny a little earlier this yeah. week, too. Um, anyway, for those of you first time listeners, I got to welcome you to the Up and Up podcast. This is the podcast where we're focused on cultivating the culture. We do that by providing amazing stories of individuals, groups, movements, uh, man, people out here who are just going after it, right? Yeah. Like li- literally going after what they want, letting nothing stop them, staying on the up and up, right? Exemplifying what that means. Um, and I do always want to make sure we're shouting out the listeners, man, the the consistent supporters. They're like family to us now, man. Yeah. Right? Uh, yeah, well, they've always been family. Yeah, I always exactly. see them as yeah, like that. But, you know, it takes a little time to, to, to build that bond. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? But um, definitely want to shout you guys out. Thank you for continuously supporting the platform and the podcast and the movement and, and those that we do bring up on the show because they definitely need the support as well. Um, if you want to continue supporting, you know what to do. Make sure to follow us and listen. You can find uh, episodes on <clears throat> excuse me, YouTube, SoundCloud, iTunes. <laughs> Just type in the Up and Up podcast, and that's where you can find it. Make sure to rate, review, subscribe. And, and you can and like it and too. Like it too. Yeah. You guys already know Erm gonna get mad if you don't like it. So just just do that. I don't for even us. get mad. I just encourage it. Just <laughs> <It's> cool. <laughs> oh, that was a little passive aggressive yeah. way of saying. Yeah, I'm saying, man. <laughs> um, now also please, please, we urge you guys to follow us and stay tapped in with the movement. We got a lot of great things coming up. Um, a lot of great ventures, a lot of great things that we're building for for the community, for the culture. Um, you can follow us at underscore the up and up on all social media platforms to stay tapped in. I'm excited, man. 2019 is a major year, man. Yeah. I mean, it's a major year for everybody that comes on this show because they're, they're on the up and up. They're doing their thing. But, you know, we're doing our thing too, right? Yeah. We got some things coming. Oh, yeah, yeah, Right? Yeah, we yeah, care we about y'all. Things. We, we yeah, got some yeah, things coming. Yeah. Um, yeah, man. Any 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 announcements you want to make? You good? Straight. Can we just get to the shits? It's yeah, good? Yeah, let's okay. do it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, now... If you're, uh, if this is your first time listening, you know, we're, we're consistently always making sure that we can bring a compelling story up here, right? Um, a story that's going to drive inspiration, motivation, um, and really uh, an accurate representation. I'm like rhyming right now. Accurate representation, right? Because that's what we need in today's world, right? For us, uh, black and brown, underrepresented. So today's guest, man, I, you know, I'm, I'm trying to figure out how I can explain, but um, I would say he's a man who, who's rightfully earned the term, you know, the people's champ. Right for for his community of Seattle, um, and that's 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 usually done through action. Right, you don't just say you're the people's champ; you actually just do it, and um, the work the work you put in kind of speaks for itself. Uh, I would say um, he's a young man whose vision is definitely keeping him on the up and up. Obviously, right? We 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 make sure to keep people here who's doing that. Um, to kind of give you some insight on some of the work he's doing, you know, he's a rapper whose music has done so much is done with so much purpose um, and vision that his impact with the music actually goes way beyond the booth, way beyond the booth, man. And that's, and I, and you know, that's, I think that's what a lot of people need nowadays, man. That's what we look for in artists. Like what more are you giving us outside of the music? Right. Um, some of the things he is involved with along with the music he makes, uh, he is an educator. He is a co-founder of the Seattle people's party, a major organization in the city that is doing a lot of great work, has done, done a lot of great work as well. He's also the co-founder of Wablock, which is Washington building leaders of change organization. Um, we're going to get into all that. He's doing a lot of great work. Not to mention, this man has also been named by Seattle Magazine as one of the most influential people of 2018. Yeah. So um, he's a leader in every sense of the word. I think it's better. It's best that we just get straight to it, man. Our guest is none other than the agent of change himself, Rel B. Free. Can we get a round of applause for my yeah. brother? Yes, yes, yes. Welcome, brother. Thank you, man. Thank you. Ooh, illustrious. Yeah. 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 Some yeah. Of you know what I always say is uh, every great album needs a good intro. So absolutely, you know what I mean. Every so let's, album so let's make a good album, right? I feel you. You about to say that every <laughs> I know, show? I, I feel know. it. Let's do it. I feel like it's sticking. I feel like it's sticking. Um, 
Now, if you're familiar with the show, we usually start off with the quote of the day, right? Something to kind of get the vibe right, get the mood right. And, you know, I'm not, I'm not the guy who's really a man of words more so than this guy over here. So, quote, yeah. man, quote, man, what you yeah, got? Yeah, me, man. <laughs> um, all right, so the quote of the day is, empowerment isn't a buzzword among leadership gurus. It's a proven technique where leaders give their teams the appropriate training, tools, resources, and guidance to succeed. Mm. 100. Who said that? John Rampton. Businessman. You want to run that back? You know? <laughs> yep, yep, yep. You know what All I'm right. asking. Yeah, yeah. So the quote is, empowerment isn't a buzzword among leadership gurus. It's a proven technique where leaders give their teams the appropriate training, tools, resources, and guidance to succeed. Mm. That's deep. That's yeah. Talk. Yeah. I think that term empowerment can be used loosely. You know, mm-hmm. um, I even I actually even heard you speak on empowerment uh, through your music in terms of, um, you know, it's not just about you saying it, but it's about what you get from it and how, what you bring out of people as well. Right. Yeah. Um, so before we get into everything you're doing, you're doing a lot, man. And we definitely want to applaud Probably you. Too and, much. <laughs> <laughs> it's never enough. Man. It's never <laughs> yeah. enough. But we also want to get into kind of the what we do here on the show is we provide context to people's success. Right. And people's contributions and what they're doing. Um, so let's kind of take it back, man. I know you're homegrown, uh, Seattle, right? Seattle Our raised. Race. Mm-hmm. Um, so talk a little bit about your upbringing here, um, coming up and kind of how that shaped your outlook on life going, mm-hmm. coming up. Word up. Yeah, man. I'm from Seattle, south end of Seattle. Mm-hmm. Known this guy since like middle school. Uh, yes, I grew up on Beacon Hill all the way to Rainier Beach. That's like stomping grounds. Uh, I went to Zion Prep. If y'all know what Zion Prep is, that was oh, yeah. all black, uh, little school over there off, uh, um, I'm okay. Mm-hmm. Um, went there, went to Aki for middle school, wound up going to O'Day for high school. So, you know, I got to gotta say that. Mm-hmm. Um, still stayed in South End, though. And so yeah. that was kind of a part of my story, just like going back and forth between different worlds, uh, being able to see a bunch of different parts of Seattle, mm. experience that, um, and have that like add to me and add value to me. Mm. Uh, shout out to my mom and dad, my sister. I grew up with a thick village. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like a lot of cousins, a lot of family. Um, I'm second generation Seattle. My dad's originally from Compton, California. My mm-hmm. mom grew up in Yesup Terrace. Mm-hmm. Um, and I got mad family out here, yeah. mad family in L.A. Man, I've always been inside of music, always been in my books to be 100. That's good. You know what I'm saying? Oh, like, yeah. I, sure. that's, that shit came to me, and so yeah. I did it. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. I was a hooper. I played for a little bit, and um, played in high school, played at SPU mm. um, for a couple of years uh, before I had to transition that. Yeah, man. Sound Born like, raised in the city as well. Sound, sound like you had a lot of outlets growing up. Hella. Hella outlets, right? Yeah, yeah. I got to choose where, you know what I'm saying? I, I just feel like I always had, you said empowerment. I just feel like I had a sense of what I wanted to do. Mm. And there wasn't that many people that was going to try to stop me. Mm. Like, if I wanted to hoop, it was like, all right, go ahead, hoop. Mm-hmm. If I was like, I'm trying to rap, definitely people try to hate on me for it. Yeah. But I to try to rap too, bro. People still be hating on me. There's a point you know where it's like, okay, you can't you can't hate on somebody if they're better than you. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. No, yeah, no, like if I'm they better. score on you, you ain't gonna you yeah. can't hate on them. Yeah. They just scored on you. Yeah, yeah. if they out rap you, what you gonna say? Yeah, yeah. But you but you know, I think <laughs> what I'm getting is it allowed you. And I I don't know if this is the case with a lot of other urban areas growing up, but as kids, you know, you just want to be given a chance to express yourself, right? And I think it seems like you gave you were given a chance to express yourself, whether it was through sports, whether it was through music. Whether it's through you know academics, whatever it is, yeah. um, we kind of had to build it though too. Like yeah. I remember, uh, I couldn't get into the open mics when I was a teenager because mm-hmm. they was all like twenty one plus. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? I had homies that like put them on, um, and so we started open mics um, and mm-hmm. like doing shows and like parties in, in the South End mm-hmm. to give people a place yeah. to express. You know, yeah, yeah. and that was before I was like MC and I was just trying to host a show. What age was this? This is like 15, 16, 17. Wow. We started an open mic called Empire Nights um, that carried on probably like until like 2010. That's dope. 2011. Damn, 15, um, man. Yeah, I came up yeah, around yeah. a lot of folk that was like doing similar stuff that like, and it was like, yo, real, you can, you can host a show. Yeah. When I learned that it doesn't take a lot to do some of the things that I see everybody saying they want to mm-hmm. do, to me it just clicked. Like it wasn't a question. I don't got to ask nobody for mm-hmm. permission or mm-hmm. help. It's like... Nah, you, 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 you down for this? Yeah. Yeah. Let's build it. Yeah. You know? I feel you. Yeah. Because sometimes we're like, when we're on the outside looking in, we're like, man, can never imagine doing that, you know, until yeah. you start doing it. You're like, man, that, it wasn't even that hard. I was over here thinking it was like, mm-hmm. yeah. you know, you got to give an arm and a leg to like make something happen. But, yeah. you know, it's just all about it's doing it. It's just doing it, though. Yeah. I, like this guy right here, I remember growing up, he used to throw parties all the time. And 
it may, make it look effortless though. You know what I'm saying? And so when I see people just do events, I know just from now actually have done a couple events myself. Yeah. It's just doing it. Do it the first time. After that, the rest is just building on whatever it is. Mm-hmm. Didn't go right yep. the last time you did it. You know what I'm saying? It can be easy. Yeah. And not not easy in the sense like it doesn't take work or effort. Because mm-hmm. when you when you host an event like yeah, not gets a lot of coordination. Oh yeah. But that's how you know you're living in your passion when you make you make it look easy. It feels mm-hmm. easy. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like every jump shot Kobe took. Looked mm-hmm. like it was it wasn't no work, mm-hmm. but that's because he shot. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you should you should you should you shoot as much as Kobe. You know what I'm saying? It's gonna <laughs> you better, you better <laughs> yeah. make as much. Hell yeah! Yeah. Um, For real. Now I'm actually curious to know because, um, you know, you you do kind of uh, exude a lot of uh, you know similarities from a lot of leaders that we've probably known in the past, right? I think we all do. We all try to channel certain people that inspired us or motivated us. Um, who were some influences you had? Because, you know, music and activism is kind of that, it's a marriage, you know what I'm saying? And there's yeah. not a lot of artists that I can say kind of blend both of them. But right. do, you, do you have, like, influences? Yeah, for sure. And then I, I feel like people don't, they don't they don't embody the intersection for a long time because mm. they either, like, go either way. Mm. You know what I'm saying? They might go Lupe or they might fall off the map, mm. you know what I'm saying? Or mm-hmm. they switch up and then they ain't about no, like, real shit anymore. yeah. yeah. Mm. Yeah. So yeah, I'm I'm where I'm at right now. <laughs> I, I got vision of where I want to be. Consistency. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but cats like Bob Marley for sure. Uh, musically, pop, mm-hmm. Kanye. Like I'm hell influenced by Kanye. Like yeah. musically, like that was. Yeah. I mean, I was like one of the only people I knew that was listening to College Dropout. Wow. Had my like CD player. Had to have the edited version. Ooh. My little pullover <laughs> he said, headphones. Hold on, hold on. He said CD player, the man. CD player. This I remember them like days. 2006. <laughs> yeah. 2004. Don't skip you know on what me. I'm saying around that time. <laughs> yeah, for real. Um, so like musically, I would say that. Yeah. Um, and then my community, yo. I think about folks like Ella Baker, mm. um, my homegirl Nikita, my sister, mm-hmm. my family. Shout out Nikita. Um, Malcolm X, of course. Mm-hmm. Uh, she got to job. Like I, I read a lot. My pops put books in my hand. Especially books by black folk, wow. um, books by African people. That's important, um, man. Yeah, absolutely, bro. We're growing up in Seattle, especially South Seattle, bro. I mean, we got the Ethiopians, mm-hmm. Somali. Like, it's mm-hmm. very diverse when it comes to like African diaspora. Mm-hmm. And from an early age, I always understood as, us as being like interconnected and somehow, mm-hmm. you know. And wouldn't that wasn't always what we were seeing around yeah. us, you know. That's right. um, and so I always was reading. And like just understanding like who I was and my identity, mm. and I wanted that. I, shit, I wanted to know who I was at an early age. I mm-hmm. feel like that's a funny thing. People don't know who they are. That's why we make weird decisions. Mm-hmm. And had a lot of people that was empowering me to. That's important you know, though, man. Because then you know, I feel like a lot of black youth um, are are seen as like an anomaly when they do get those books handed to them. Because not everybody is getting them handed to them. You know what I'm saying? So then you you seem like the guy who stands out somewhat because they're like, oh, how do you know all this shit? And you're like, yo, I mean, shit. shit I listen too. Yeah, 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 you know. So I think it's, it it speaks to a greater issue where it's just we just need to provide more resources and educate the youth. You know what I'm saying? Like at an early age, when they're actually gonna listen to you, when you put a book in their hand, not when they're at that age when they feel like they know who they are. Yeah, right. You know what I'm saying? For real. So, um, you know, you said you was putting, you didn't want to MC yet, but you was trying to put shows and stuff together, right? So, yeah. what made you want to MC or become a rapper? Man, I was always, like, writing therapeutically. It was, like, for me. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't, like, writing to, like, share with nobody. Mm-hmm. Um, but seeing my homies come up on stage, I always, like, hop in the cypher. That was, like, the environment I grew up in, battle rap <laughs> cypher. Yeah. So, like, I love I, like, I love that shit. Like, yeah. even to the day, I love it. Um, but probably my homies pushing me, being like, okay, real, like, you know, spit that. Like, we heard you spit in the back, you know? Yeah. Hop up on stage. And I'm probably, like, 14, 15. I finally started to do that, mm-hmm. um, do it more consistently. I really came out uh, doing a lot of spoken word poetry. Mm-hmm. And so even now today, people will say, like, oh, he's a spoken word artist. And I'm like, well, I do that. But <laughs> <laughs> like a couple other things I can do, yeah, you know what yeah, I'm saying? I can yeah, spit them yeah. 16 too. Yeah. Um, and so just, just doing it, bro, stepping out, doing it consistently. Mm-hmm. I've been performing a lot since I was, like, 16. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So 10 years, I'm, like, always on stage. Yep. Um, and just build a comfort. And that was a part of my plot, too. I was, like, a lot of cats, when it comes to music, mm-hmm. they make music that you can hear, and it's, like, okay, it's popping, y'all play it. But then you see them on stage perform, it's, like, oh, mm-hmm. these niggas whack. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They don't even know their own words. Like, the people ain't vibing with them. Mm-hmm. And yeah. I was, like, nah, I'm going to flip it. I'm going to make sure my stage presence and my performance mm-hmm. is 100% undeniable. And then I make sure like I get my mechanics and my, mm. my, my flow in the booth. I, th- I feel like I feel like a lot of artists 
try to do it the other way around though you know mm -hmm. they focus on the song make sure the song's good the beat's right my lyrics are good and then they're like oh shit i gotta perform this and yep. then <laughs> you know mm -hmm. i've seen some whack-ass <laughs> artists perform on stage <laughs> and i'm like yo the song is hot but what are you doing you know what yeah. I mean? yeah um now i'm actually curious to know because um growing up uh you know there's 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 that route of like conscious rap right and then you said you do you did spoken word and all these different things. Um, did that bother you when people try to categorize you as just one thing? Because I, I hate that to this day. Like, you know, you probably do multiple things and someone says, oh, you do this. And you're like, you, it kind of gets you a little bit, right? Because yeah. you're like, yo, this is equally as important as what, I'm, what you see me as. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. how, how do you deal with that? Or for those who are dealing with that right now, how would you yeah. say they should deal with that? I mean, people going to do that no matter what. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But absolutely. Like, people, I was just talking, I talked to these guys about this a lot. Like me not wanting to get put in a box because I spit real shit mm -hmm. and I talk about like the stuff that I'm actually doing because what would, what would I rather do? Like lie? Mm -hmm. Then you call me out and say that, yeah. oh, you lying about it. Mm -hmm. So I'm not going to do that. You know, I mm -hmm. keep it 100. I keep it real. Integrity. Um, but also like, this is the kind of music I want to make. This is my lane. Didn't nobody tell most deaf and, you know, don't do that. I'm sure people probably did. So I say, bro, just stay in your lane. Yeah. That's what I'm going to keep doing. Yeah. You know, I, I know my vision yeah. and the people around me absolutely know my vision yeah. you know what i'm saying and it's worked for me thus far yeah i can't really like take too much insight from people that ain't either put money in my pocket yeah or or lifting me up yeah if, if you're not doing one or the other then like yeah. you're either in the way and you need to get out the yeah. way or you're trying to and it's it, you, when you talk about visions man that's the thing man like, i think some people don't understand like your, a vision is unique to your two eyes and then what's going on in your mind you know what i'm saying like yeah. You can't really bring people in and expect them to critique your vision, right? Like, I feel like all they can do is either enhance your vision, and that's about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They can either try to help and enhance it, or that's about it, you know? Because yeah. that's all you should be able to take anyways. Yeah. I take it, though. Like, to be yeah. honest, I take in all feedback. Yeah, yeah, you and should. I, and, you should. And, bro, like, as an artist, like, I hop off stage, people holler at me. I'm like, y'all, holler at me. I don't... Mm -hmm. I didn't say that you couldn't tell yeah. me what you was thinking, because a, as a musician, as an artist, as a creative... I, I do want people to like what I'm making yeah. and enjoy it. So I take all that feedback. That's good. Now I take it with a grain of salt. That's good, yeah. Because, you know, you can't just, like, overexpose yourself to random critique. Yeah. But at mm -hmm. the same time, if you're really about the craft and you're trying to improve and you want to make something that is globally, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, uh, appreciated, then you take that feedback in. So I take in, you know, the stuff that's not constructive. Yeah. I hear it. Yeah. If I don't need it. I release Tuck it. it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. If it's something that makes me think and I'm mad about it, I'm like, that's how you know when you like you mm -hmm. hear something you was mad at, they said it, and then you thought about it later on that night and you're like, All right. Yeah. I mean, I probably could switch it up a yeah, little bit. Yeah, I was know? already <laughs> thinking about this. Yeah. <laughs> now that's real though. That's yeah, real. I feel you. So like early on, were you starting off with uh you know, cause like you know, some rappers they just start off doing everything themselves, like getting mm -hmm. software recording, you know, putting everything together. So mm. how what was it like for you? Man, musically was in a band first mm. and that's why like i feel like my ear is like very like musical like i i, I want to make like music music you mm. know um cold water theater when i stopped hooping at spu uh like my sophomore year uh college that was my other outlet i always was like you know what i'm saying writing mm. and the crew uh, a bunch of us the homie john q rondo uh Tariq, christian we just uh, bravo we just went into the booth and started making music mm -hmm. um and we was connected with a crew called cold water theater shout out to luna god um who makes a lot of my who produces a lot of my music mm -hmm. um and he's in la right now on his own wave shout out to jj kim ian marcus a whole bunch of folk we just started out making music mm. yeah. and that was original that was the original plot man i was just in jam sessions uh with artists that was going from the piano to the drums from the drums to the bass, mm. from the bass to the background vocals. Yeah, Shout out yeah. to Sam Hushin too. Yeah. Um, and that's where I, that's that's why I was like, man, like I, this is what I want to do. Like my whole life, I was make these kind of vibrations. Yeah, yeah. 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 And so then uh, going through college, just like making music, writing, mm -hmm. performing. I left the country for a little bit, probably like six months. Came back. While I was gone, I was like, okay, this is my plan for the next like. This is how I'm gonna map it out. Mm -hmm. um, and that's when I came back. I was like, All right, I'm finna hit the stage. Mm -hmm. I'm finna perform every month, every week if I can. I'm just get on stage, wherever you ciphers, can, wherever you can get on battles, yeah. open mics. I'm finna just do all yeah. that. 2015, I was doing that the whole year. Then I was like, okay, 2016, I'm finna hop in the booth and really just like begin creating my own sound yeah. that I want. Um, did that for a whole year. Released a Super Predator EP on uh, 
January 2017. Mm-hmm. Probably I dropped like four projects in 2017 mm-hmm. alone. And then that's when I really started to feel like a groove. Started messing with some different producers. Dropped New Growth last year, 2018. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so I'll, even though like my first official solo project came out in 2017, it's 2019 right now, I probably released like four different projects, but not a bunch of other people's. And I got a bunch more in the tank that I'm just like waiting to... Uh, and just trying to perfect. So I'm getting that you, you're a hard worker. That's number one. Okay. <laughs> I would say that. Yeah. yeah. Number one. I, I number, one. <laughs> number one. Number one. I'm just saying. Let me just go ahead and just kind of put things in perspective here. But so you work hard. Yeah. Right. Because I think there's a lot of artists out here, aspiring artists, aspiring creatives, and you know, I feel like creating should be fun, should be therapeutic, should be expressive, but it's supposed to be taxing too. It's supposed to be a sacrifice. It's supposed to be a struggle too. You're supposed to go through all those emotions. You know what I'm saying? And so, um, but you did mention something that I think was, was kind of interesting where you said after you were done playing basketball, you kind of got together with a bunch of people and you guys were all together in this and expressing, you were seeing that he does this and he does this and she Mm -hmm. does this or whatever. Um, I, I see artists sometimes who kind of put themselves in a box, right? Where they're like, nah, I'm not going to collaborate with this person or, um, what can they, what, what can they provide for me? I know my sound, you know? Mm -hmm. And I, I think. Can you speak to that, like the importance yeah. of opening yourself up to collaboration and 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 how that can help you grow as an artist, but also just your career as yeah. as a musician? Oh, for real, bro. I mean, TDE, mm. Pro Era, mm-hmm. Save Money, Naughty by Nature, bro. Like we can go, we can yeah. go down the list. Yeah, a, a lot of the major like influencers in hip hop, De La Soul, Outkast. It's it's Dungeon Family. Dungeon Family. It's yeah. it's it's groups of people mm-hmm. that are building each other up, and I just feel like. In Seattle, especially, I think there's a assumption that there's not enough to go around. And so cats, you know, or they, feel, or they just feel like I'm I'm so different that mm. nobody else is on my wave, and mm. so then they silo themselves. Which yeah. is like, hey, if you want to yeah. do that, like, yeah. cool. Like I'm yeah. I'm not going to judge nobody. Whatever for works doing for that. you works mm-hmm. for you, but it there's other ways. There's it depends other ways. on what you mean work, and it depends on how mm. you define success. Mm. Uh, but That's to real. be straight up, like in my first few projects, I was like, I don't want nobody else's input. Mm. It's me and the <laughs> producer. <laughs> no, nah, for real. Yeah, I was nah, one. Hey. I was like, nah, like, cause I don't. I'm at this point. I don't need nobody telling me like, oh, you should spit like this. Mm. What have you talked about yeah, this? Like, yeah. nah, I got to give myself. Yep. It's like when you you give me a ball and I walk into the court. Don't tell me start like, nah, hey, start start closer to the hoop. Like, nah, yeah. bro, let me get a feel for one of them. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Let me get some I'll shots up. Yeah. Um, and that's how I felt that you know, 2016, 2017. Mm-hmm. It was like, let me just get some shots up. Mm. Um, and then that's when I really started to like, okay, let me pull in the homies. Yeah. Start getting more ideas. And I think I'm just continuing to do that more and more. Um, in a healthy way, and it's like you're creating, you're creating more opportunities too, man. Like that's another thing people don't understand. Sometimes with music, is you, you like you said TDE, man. Like one thing I know for a fact is, um, aside from J Rock, a lot of them were trying to figure their shit out yep. at, early on. You know, like they he said, Schoolboy School Q was sleeping in the studio. He had nowhere to stay. Like so, it wasn't like they were even rappers at that point. They were just looking for like some sort of camaraderie, some sort of support. Mm-hmm. And then it look what it turns into. Mm-hmm turns into probably the, the hottest rap group in the, in the game, period. You yeah, know what I'm saying? For real. So I like that you spoke to that. Um, you said New Growth, which yeah. dropped 2017? 2018. 2018, I'm February. sorry. Mm-hmm. No, you good. Um, so I always do this shit with rappers. You know that, right? Yeah, I, yeah, I always yeah. want to pull lyrics from songs and just kind of get your insight on certain things. Um, <laughs> so uh, there's a line in the song, um, Niggas with Guns. Yeah. Right? And that's spelled N E G U S. Go do your go do your homework, y'all, if y'all don't know what that is. <laughs> <Do your homework. laughs> yeah. Um, so the line goes, Niggas with guns, see your own kind, you better run. Um, can you speak to that? Because, I mean I kinda I got it right then and there, but I think there's a deeper message beneath that. What what kind of led to that line? So I think the line you're saying you said, Niggas with guns. Okay, you you heard it different, which okay, is actually okay. cool. Okay, break it down. Um, I say I say see me you I say see me you better run. Okay, but no, oh. that's that song is uh, okay. it's like a continuation of a song I dropped on the other album called Catch Twenty Two, mm. which was me talking about like I might invest in the tech, I might invest in the tech, uh, like me thinking like man, actually I want to strap up because I see niggas out here getting popped every day. Mm. Maybe if I strap up, that's gonna protect me. I'm gonna feel safer. And me was just going through that song Catch Twenty Two like. Will I actually feel safer, or am I like you gonna be prepared to like really like you know take the homie life? Mm. That was me going through that in that song. Niggas with guns was me flipping it like all oh, these white folk be tripping when a nigga got a gun, but you know what I'm saying the police, these dudes walk walk up in the church, you know what I'm saying. I was mm. at I was at SPU. Mm. I was in the space that homie came and like shot up mm. at the school shooting in 2014. Damn. Um, 
the white folk pull up with it and like you know they say cats are mentally ill or whatever you know yeah. and so in that song in that line in particular I was just like they don't want to see a king strapped up you mm. know what I'm saying because I'm I'm an advocate for mm. people to know how to use yeah. guns you know what I'm saying yeah. I'm not saying everybody got to strap up yeah but I think you should rather know how to use it yeah. than not. Yeah, you know how to use it, when to use it. How to use it and when to, it's the same yeah. as like uh, the, uh, uh, martial arts. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? You learn how to use your body and defend yourself. Mm-hmm. That don't mean that you're going out looking for fights. That's real. You know how to defend yourself. That's real. Your Come, there's an episode of Hey Arnold that's perfect for that. That's, that's, my, my, that's, that's my, my favorite. Show. That's my favorite <laughs> yeah. cartoon. That's crazy. That's, that's yeah. <laughs> Damn, for real. <laughs> yeah, but go ahead. Yeah, my fault, my fault. I, just had a I just had to say, I was like, damn, he got real. <laughs> but go ahead, break it down. What, so. Uh, you said there was an episode? I want to... Oh, the episode yeah, Hey Arnold? Oh, yeah, for yeah, sure. Yeah, I didn't yeah, want to break it down. <laughs> That's hella funny. I'm, okay. I'm about to go watch Nah, this yeah. So, uh, you know, Arnold's getting... He getting messed with. You yeah, know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. By these cats. You know, cats like Harold. You yeah, know, fat yeah, boy messing yeah, with him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, And he's like, yo, I'm tired of getting messed with. I think he get robbed. Him and Gerald get robbed or yeah. something. Mm. I know. He's like, this guy still be watching Hey Arnold. Nah, shit. Hulu, nah, you know? watching it, yeah. So these guys are like, okay, we got to learn how to... We got to learn how to defend ourselves. So grandma, crazy, you know? She teach him how to do karate and stuff. And they're going through it. They uh, learn the karate. Yeah, I remember uh, that episode. Arnold learned the karate. But then what ends up happening, he start, it starts going to his head. Mm-hmm. And he starts walking around. He starts punking people. Punking people. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He's taking money from people. Yeah. You know what I mean? scaring people. You know, and even his homies is like, bro, Gerald's like, he cool dude. Yeah. Like, you tripping. You get chill yeah. out, bro. Power, like, power trip. <laughs> yeah, like, you doing trip. all yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. You know, he's like, fall back. And then like, in, in, the, in the story, it basically, you know, yeah. he, he understands it's not about going out and looking for it. It's yeah. about being ready. Yeah. You know, yeah. and so that song, and I know even my mom, she's like, Jarrell, you advocating violence. You're telling people to shoot at the cops and stuff. And I was like, I ain't said that. <laughs> I just want people to think different. I'm tired of getting yeah. shot at and, yeah. you know what I'm saying, hands yeah. up, don't shoot, don't work. That's real. Yeah. <laughs> That's real. I mean, you got to. We got to be, you got to be on the defense. I mean, we're always on the defense as it is. You know what I'm saying? But it's like when you're on the, on the defense and unarmed at the same damn time, That's tough. It's tough, you know what I'm saying? We see we see what that results in, but um, kind of segueing into what I think can help um, kind of rectify these issues that we're facing. Man, we're facing a lot of shit, you know, as a people. Um, but one thing I really want to applaud you for doing is, and this is something I something I really know works. I actually heard Nipsey talk about this. How he said that you got to build institutions, right, within your community, right, things that people can actually depend on. You know, like tangible things that they could depend on, right? Not just hope, not just, you know, rah, rah and all that. You know what I'm saying? And what you did with uh, Wablock, Washington Building Leaders of Change, right? Um, can you talk about that organization and what, first of all, what you guys are aiming to accomplish, but then um, speak to some of the work you guys are doing mm-hmm. in, in that group? Because I, I really think it's important for people to know. Yeah. Shout out to Darzel, mm-hmm. Laura, Sky Jordan, Miriam, Zion, Naima, Ifra. Bro, there's... So many people, Shout them out. Chelsea. There so many people that was at the table. Young folk too, Ryan. Um, with Wablock, I mean People's Party. Uh, I work with a group called the Corner Greeters. Like our back, bro. I do a lot of this stuff because when the money come, we need somewhere to put it. Mm. I think a lot of cats like they try to like hustle and they all about the money and that's what they say. It's like, oh yeah, I'm about to pay for. I'm trying to get this bag. And it's like, cool, I do that. You know what I'm saying? But for me, I'm like, I'm finna build something that's going to exist. So when the money come, we already got the spot to funnel it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? We already got the program Mm -hmm. set up, parked in the school. Mm -hmm. So when the money come, it's the connection and we already built it. And you build it so, we were talking about uh, the quote in empowerment. Mm -hmm. It's building succession. I'm 26 and I'm already thinking about like who who gonna learn stuff that I've been able to do and I move out the way so they can do it themselves. Mm. They can teach somebody else. And then the pipeline, somebody asked me, like, why would you think like that? You're 26. You could still, you know what I'm saying? You could still be blah, blah, blah. Do for and you. I'm like, yeah. well, but I'm, my, my head's over here. I'm scattered <laughs> yeah, brain, yeah, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Once I teach some, I mean, it's not even like about me teaching somebody. I learn everything that I do. You know, cats like Nikita, uh, my sister, you know what I'm saying, the homie Glenn, like, they, they, they taught me how to do certain yeah. things. So I pass it off, make it easier, mm-hmm. and we got a bigger team. Mm-hmm. Um, so with Wall Block, it wasn't just me. It was a bunch of people, a yeah, bunch of young folks. Sure, I was like, sure. we got to do this. We got to start this organization so we can run the summer program. Initially, it started out as um, we all got cut from another organization. Mm-hmm. Um, they, didn't, they didn't tell us. They didn't tell, the, they didn't tell the kids. They didn't tell the family. They didn't tell the school. And they basically dared us to like raise the money to do the summer program. 
ourselves. Damn. It was like, all right. We raised like 50 racks yeah. in like 16 days. Damn. Was able to make the deposit so that we could run the program because our summer program was free, provide food, books, uh, dope education. Um, and then from that, we carried that into the school year, working on Rainier Beach. So I've been working on Rainier Beach for the last like five years since mm -hmm. I graduated. Mm -hmm. um, and like that's that's what we that's what we needed. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah, um, yeah. Employing young people from the neighborhood in a number of different places, that's another part of like everything that I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Bro, it's not just about me. I take pay yeah. cuts so that we can make sure we got enough yeah. to feed the family. Yeah. You know, yeah. um we went from not having no money in the bank to having enough to hire ten people. Yeah. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Like that's and it's wow. it's not even about the fact that we did it. It's one the impact that it's having yeah. in the school. It's given other it's given these young twenty twenty two year olds opportunities to really like yeah. contribute to the organization yeah. it's, it's, it's malleable like i want Man, it's, it's want it to be it's, repre to be it's representative too yeah you know what i'm saying it's a symbol i think a lot of times these things that are that should be common that aren't common when yeah. they're done you got to use them as symbols mm -hmm. right symbols of change symbols of action like so i can i bring that up because it's something that we can look at and say oh sometimes when you tell someone hey bro we need to make institutions and do this you're like what okay <laughs> but then you could point out what they're doing and and literally there you go you have no excuse now you have like a blueprint you have someone who's done it and it's working and it's thriving um and you guys did a project about what was it was a corner you said corner greeters that's yeah, that's something else but okay but yeah. but I, I remember uh seeing something about crime prevention or trying to help minimize crime mm -hmm. um is it was that was that oh as, so that's where our back yeah these okay. uh young folk in rainer beach they was like okay um if Crime is happening, crime, whatever, you know what I'm saying? Cats be flocking from the safe way and mm -hmm. stuff, and they get in trouble. So we're like, well, what can we do to keep them from having to even go over there? Um, and so they host events. Like, this is literally teaching young folk how to host events mm -hmm. in their neighborhood. So we go to corner, go to Rainier Henderson, you know what I'm saying? We go to Rainier Rose, mm -hmm. that's, what you, that's where you see me at. Mm -hmm. um, and we just pop up, we give food to folk, clean up the area. Holla at people. Like I said, it's Rainer Beach students, it's Franklin students, Cleveland students mm -hmm. that are, like, running it mm -hmm. and doing it, um, and they're engaging with each other, and it's yeah. just, like, kind of changed the environment a little bit. Are they are they receptive? Are they as receptive as you would like them to be, would you say? Or I mean, they can pay. They sh they show up, one, because they want to, and two, and well, everybody. Well, not, like not so much the, the employees, but, like, those that you're engaging with, like, the yeah, I mean, everybody, community kids. At the end of the day, it's like, you can be mad at somebody for, like, Doing something like this, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's, it's just haters, yeah. You know what I'm saying? At the end that's of the day, you, you giving food to people that didn't have have food. That's real. What are you gonna say? That's real. What exactly. can you say to them? Yeah, you know, yeah. like if you want to talk mess about that, then like go ahead, but mm -hmm. you gonna look like a weirdo. Yeah. Um. So at the end of the day, you know, um, we do it every week, every couple weeks. Yeah. Um. And it's consistent. Like yeah. I, like I was saying earlier, just like the consistency. You got to be consistent. Yeah. And I think that's the thing too. Like we've been doing that for three years. I've been at beach for five years. Sometimes it's just you do it enough, and you don't have to speak for it. Like I ain't never asked for like I ain't asked Seattle Magazine to hit me up. Mm -hmm. I ain't asked Seattle Times to hit me up. I don't ask South Seattle Emerald. I don't ever ask yeah. for like none of that. You yeah. just keep doing it. Your work speaks for itself. And I guess people, will, yeah. And that's not even what it's way. about. Yeah, you know. It's but you, was. but you, you do want to shed light on that, and it's important. It's important people do shed light on the great work that's happening out here too, man. Because. Yeah. Yeah, there's <laughs> we need more of it, man. But there's a lot of it though. I mean, y'all yeah, had no, y'all had Najee up here, Nikita, yeah, yeah. Isam. Yeah. Like uh the young lady from uh, that was here last episode. Uh uh Lestrandra. Uh, yeah. Alfred, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. like there's a and I think that's the thing that I want to be broadcasting more is the fact that like, nah, bro, there's a lot of dope people that came up in the town. Yeah. That's right. Exactly. That's, that's right. like from the that's city, real. that's from the soil, that's you know, giving back not just to young folk, but they making waves culturally. You know, they yeah. fly. Shout out to Gift to Gab, Dave. You know, yeah. the homie Javon. Yeah, There's like a lot of people that's really making a wave. And, that, and that's what it's about, man. Like you know, it's really just paying accurate narratives, man. I, for a long time, I've always said Seattle isn't as reflective as we'd like it to be, right? So when mm -hmm. someone comes or someone from who's not from here would think Seattle, there's a lot of things they would think it'd probably be, but coffee, Seahawks. Amazon, like you know, rain. just the, yeah, rain. rain yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But there's so much culture, there's so much work being done here, man. That um, you know, us along with other platforms out here are trying to highlight, man, and really trying to shed light on. Mm -hmm. um, now you work with a lot of young people, right? And I, I think you would probably know um, or have some tips or advice because my whole thing is, 
how do you get those introverted conscious folks, right, who aren't rah-rah, don't want to be the hero, don't want to have the blow horn or whatever, how do you get them to contribute? Or what are some things they can do to contribute? Because I feel like they're like, man, if I'm not Tupac, if I'm not Malcolm X, then I, I can't really do anything, you know? I mm. thought there's a lot of people who are like that. But do yeah. you have any advice for them? Bro, I think it's about, like, flipping, flipping the narrative on, like, how things actually happen. I think we think it's the me kind of personality. I'm going to be 100%. Like, I'm a... My, I'm an out there kind of dude, you know. I step yeah. into a room and like I'm loud and shit. Yeah, you know, like I like that is me. That's a part of who I am. You came in here screaming, guys. I'm joking. <laughs> Not like a part of who I am, yeah. but the reality is like so. Then we think that is what leadership is. We think that you got to be talking mm. a lot it means you got to be a dude. You know what I'm saying? It means yeah. you got to be tall, got to be you know light skin, good looking. All these things that mm. we say like this is what a leader looks like. Mm. But the reality is, it's so. And what I would say, how I approach that, is not even by necessarily. Like, having to say, like, oh, you're introverted or... Yeah. It's just, like, flipping the narrative, bro. Like, there's so many people that contribute to everything that's ever happened from Martin Luther King. Talk yeah. about that. Talk about... Uh, even, like, musically, bro. Catch that. We never heard of Help Build Victory Lap. That's yeah. real. Help Build Marathon. That, that's facts. You know what I'm saying? That's um, facts. Pe- ghost writers. The people in the back. Um, yeah. uh, PR. Mm-hmm. People that work in admin. You mm-hmm. know, like, it's there's so many roles that we need Mm -hmm. and I think the important thing is for people like me to acknowledge that we take up a lot of space Mm. and to be like yo I don't always need to be the one talking Mm -hmm. let me take us let me take a step back allow other people's ideas to be you know what I'm saying shared and empowering the people you gotta you gotta create environments where everybody feels valued Mm -hmm. I think at the end of the day if you're in a room with 10 people and half of them is introverted and the other people that are going to talk as soon as you, you know, ask somebody to talk, they got to recognize, yo, chill out sometimes. Yeah. And then those it, it, and those people that maybe wouldn't usually speak, create an environment where everybody feels valued. They feel like, yeah, they feel they like it's their time to talk. Yeah. 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 It don't got to be hard. No, that's actually a good point, though. I like that because I feel like if if the hero is highlighting the person on his team or her team, um, me watching, it's going to make me value them a little more, right? I'll be like, if I'm a kid, I'm like, oh, shit, the hero the hero just shouted this person out? Okay, I don't have to be him. I could be that person too, you know? Um, so I think, I, think, I think that's a good point. Sometimes we got to realize the power we have as leaders too, you know? Oh, yeah, that's real. That's real. So, um, I mean, obviously we grew up in South End, Seattle. Um, What's your take on the – we were kind of talking about it earlier, how we mm. might end up having to move, <laughs> you know what I mean? So what's mm. your take on, like, gentrification and, mm-hmm. like, what do you think we need to do? Man, bro, it's a lot we need to do. Yeah. yeah. I know I know you could, you could go all day about it. You could talk all day. I'm going to wrap it yeah, up. Yeah, No, for real. <laughs> hey, but that's what we were talking about. We need to get land. Yep. ASAP. Mm-hmm. We, we need to save up money. Bro, community co-op. We got three people right here. We each put up 15 racks. That's a down payment on a house. Yep. That five of our friends could live in. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so I think when we gotta stop being weird about money, because if you, it take money to make money, mm. you, broke people don't get rich overnight. You Scare know money saying? never made a purchase. Never. <laughs> and 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 and, that's my, that's my and making money is not about one in you know, one income stream. Millionaires have seven different. Mm. So you gotta have a couple different, you know, mm. ins and outs, mm-hmm. incomes and outcomes in your pockets. Um, so I think we need to I need, we need to talk about land, mm. which is tough in Seattle. Cause shout out to the Duwamish, shout out to the fact that like we ain't from here. Mm. I think I wrestle with the fact that like I'm black, and like I ain't asked to be here. My ancestors ain't asked to like be brought over here, uh, and we on land that was also stolen. So I know the conversation about land is like pretty yeah. it's tough. Mm-hmm. So we gotta we gotta get land. Um, I think we gotta. I try not to say di- like gentrification. I say displacement because that's the result. You know what I'm saying? It's easy for like white folk to be like, oh, gentrification. You know what I'm saying? Mm. It's a buzzword. Activist. Yeah. I never called myself an activist. People call me that. You know what I'm saying? Woke. Mm. I ain't never called myself woke. I ain't <laughs> never said a day in my life like, yeah, yeah. I'm woke. People yeah. call me that. Yeah. So, let's, talk, let's, get, let's get beneath that. Yeah, what does bro, that mean? Call it what it is. Gentrification. Yeah. Call it what yeah. it is. It's people being moved out of the city that they grew up in. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I think mm. if we call it out in a different way, we call it out for what's happening as opposed to like, it's like euphemism. Euphen- hmm. Euphemisms. There we yeah. go. Okay. That. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I got um, you, bro. I got you. So we gotta get land. Yeah. We gotta call it out for real. Um, and yo, we gotta we gotta raise up our youngins, bro. We mm-hmm. gotta yep. to 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 be successful. That's why um, part of what I'm trying to do is ultimately start a school 
Um, and I have a homeschool collective, the Ella Baker Academy, um, that I built with uh, my partner, Darzell. And, like, it's about creating the opportunity for us to build a school, yo. We can have our own, mm, yeah. you know, to, to educate our young folk, teach them what we want them to learn. Yeah. Um, and I think that that's going to be major, too, because, bro, like, I, I work at the high school. Mm -hmm. You see it firsthand. I'm, I, I watch this. Shit. I, I watch yeah. them fall through the cracks, yo. You, yeah. you, you know actually you actually catch them in a, at a later stage, though. Cause, oh, yeah. Because you know what I'm saying? Like, if we can get them earlier than that, if, you know if what I'm saying? Can, before they real. even get Because high school, man, <laughs> shit. When they hit high school, they're already, especially nowadays with all the, the information age, yeah. they really think they know what the fuck is going on more than ever. You know, yeah. you talk to like a middle schooler or elementary school kid, yeah. they think they know what the fuck is going on mm -hmm. just because they tapped in on social media and shit. So it's like, For real. the high schooler thinks they're an adult yep. at that point, you know what I'm saying? So In that freshman year though, like they, they mad influential still. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, yeah, it's yeah. like almost, it's once they hit sophomore year, that's when they're like, nah, it's who you're yeah. going to be. Mm -hmm. yeah, I got bills, homie. Yeah, I can't, feel, you can't tell yeah, me nothing. Like, season, they're like, yeah, I already know what's going on. <laughs> yeah. I already had that year. Try to teach mm -hmm. you something. I'm yeah, like, oh, yeah. shit. Okay. Damn. But, hey, we still out here, bro. Nah, nah, nah. Know, yeah, man. you know? No. Right but here, I, yeah. You got to speak on it, though. You know, I think it takes us, our generation as well, you know, to actually understand, like, even though we're still growing, right, and we're still learning about ourselves as a generation and as people, um, we can't just ignore who's coming behind us. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because I really? feel like we, if we sit here for too long trying to figure out who we are, we're going <laughs> to, you know? It's mm -hmm. just a cycle. That's how I see it coming. And so. the OGs got to, like, we got to stay connected to them, too. Because, mm. um, I mean, it's generational, you know? Mm -hmm. they, it's real. They've seen it before, too. We got we to gotta value what they've seen and what they've experienced. Yeah. It's, what's tough, though, is that I feel like there's not a lot of... I mean, you go one generation back, and most people from Seattle, black folk group in the CD, mm -hmm. just go, like, one or two generations back, most yeah. people... Um, I feel like our generation, the generation ahead of us, like a lot of like black folks from the South End. Mm -hmm. And the next like 10 years, it's going to be again, it's going to be Federal Way, Kent, yeah. Urian, yeah. the West. We're going to stop that though. We're going to find a way. Or we just, or we just <laughs> move, or we just move all our resources to Fed Way. Why not? Like we know people going to move there. Mm. Why don't we start get building a head start, there? Get a head start. The reason why we aren't able to like get any like uh, traction out here is because we keep getting moved. You're from the city, got moved to the south end, moved from the south end here. What if we, like, knowing that we're going to get moved to Federal Way? Start, Kent, yeah. Bro, then we start building. We find, we buy a club. We start mm. a club. We start a, a bakery or a, a barbershop. There now, because knowing that people going to end up there, just get ahead of the curve. We got to think different. Damn, yeah, i never seen it from that way. That sounds that like angle. a good plan. Because then it's like, once it does happen, it's going to just stay there. Yeah, we might, have, like, we might have to. We might have yeah, to. Uh, you know we might have to. it down. Yeah, yeah. yeah, we, might yeah. Have to, we might have to package this little part right here <laughs> and not release it because, you know, we can't be putting our yeah, plans no, out real. there. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so this is going to be exclusively <laughs> uh, distributed to our people, man. All right? Static on that whole convo right there. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just trying to think ahead, like you said, right? Yep. Um now, before we get you out of here, bro, we always want to make sure we can give you a chance to talk about what you got on the horizon. I know you're working, um, doing so much outside of the music, but you also do got some things within the music that are coming down the pipeline, right? Mm -hmm. So um, go ahead and tell people what they can be looking forward to, man. Yeah, me and Nikita finna drop a music video. Okay. Uh, I was out in London in December. I uh, got to connect with uh, a couple of different artists. Yeah. Uh, we did some live shit to one of the songs that was on New Growth. Yeah. Uh, we finna drop that video soon. Um, same cat that, uh, that uh, helped put that video together. I made some music with him, mm -hmm. so we got a music video coming. Um, I got this project that's going to drop, Energy, mm. coming before May, like by in the next so month and a half. Real soon, right around the corner. Yeah, okay. I'm going to be dropping a couple of videos coming. Um, I got a live show uh, with So Far Sounds on May 18th. Um, that's going to be, they, they usually announce the location like a couple weeks before. Okay. Um, that's coming up. Um, Autumn Club, uh, we got a show on June 1st that's coming up. Uh, gonna have some dope performers coming out of the city. Shout out to Just Money. Y'all working, um, man. Yo, putting in work. Hell and, yeah. Um, All you rappers out there. For real. <laughs> this guy. <laughs> nah, I'm for real. They gotta work, man. I mean, nah, we got dude, you. Yeah, yeah, I was having a conversation about it yesterday. Yeah, man. Everybody got different like work ethic, yeah. different pace, but everybody got different goals too. Mm. Yeah. What success look different to some people. Mm. You know, I seen cats like Gabriel Teodros make his living Shout off of music. Shout you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Some people might want to say different, but bro, my man's lived his life off music. Mm -hmm. That's success. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Shout out to Big Bro. He definitely put me on. Julie mm. C. You know? Uh, so depending on your definition of success, bro, keep getting after what you're yeah, man. getting after, you know? It's a marathon, man. It's a marathon. Marathon continues, man. Yes, sir. Yes, For sir. Real. So where can people find you? Social media handles? Yeah. 
Okay, I, I feel like I gotta spell it, man. I'm gonna I'm gonna start getting shirts or a headband. <laughs> Rel be free. Street. R E L L, B E free. Last time I spelled that for somebody, they still spelled it wrong. It's <laughs> cool. We're gonna we're gonna add a little. Yeah, yeah I got yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We're gonna we're gonna make sure they we're gonna make sure they get every opportunity to tap you in. Know. Yeah. Um. Yeah, man. So I always ask this question as well uh, to all to all our guests. Um, it kind of sums up a lot of what we talked about, but also cast what's ahead, right? And and you know a lot of the great work you're already doing, but what you're I know you're gonna continue doing you and your team. Um. So if you can, my brother, what's one word to describe what keeps you on the up and up? Ooh. And you can kind of explain it if you like. Mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. Man, I say energy. Mm. Energy. Because it's, you know, it's neutral, but it's what you do with it. Everything got potential energy. You know what I'm saying? Every beef, every conflict, that fight or flight you feel, that the buzz before you start the podcast, the buzz before you hop on stage, mm-hmm. it's all just energy waiting to be tapped in. And depending on how you approach it, you can manipulate that. You can leverage that towards what you're trying to conspire to do. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So I'll say it's energy. Mm. And my energy, I got a lot of it. And I'm going to keep it going on the up and up. Hell yes, yeah. Yes, sir. Hell yeah. <laughs> Yo, that's going to be the intro to my next mixtape. I don't care. Yeah. I don't care. I don't care. <laughs> we got to nah, put a beat man. behind that one. Yeah. Nah, <laughs> you know? nah, man. I'm a firm believer in energy. Like yeah. like a religion, bro. That's like I love the, the talk about that because it's so powerful, man. So mm-hmm. that's the first time we got energy too for yeah, the one word, right? Yeah, yeah, that was a plug for that. <laughs> okay. For the project yeah, coming yeah, soon yeah, too. Yeah. Energy N R G. I'm tapping in. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm tapping yes, in, bro. Sir. I'm tapping in. Um, but yeah, man, Rel, we definitely want to appreciate you for coming through the show. Um, you know, sharing your story, sharing the work you're doing, and and hopefully we we've been able to impact and touch and motivate somebody one person at least yeah, you know what yeah. i'm saying with one this love. with this episode um any any uh final nah man come on man you nah. got some no nah? nah bro that, that was fire <laughs> the energy i was like all right i can't even talk after that bro yeah man yeah. well um with that being said man i think it's safe to say that rail be free is officially a member of the up and up can we get a yeah can we get a round of applause for my brother thank you sir hey, yes sir oh, yes sir oh.